That's the bottom line. Amen. And uh, tonight, I want to talk to you, turn your attention to Romans chapter 7 with a question who's in control? I'm going to read you these verses uh, 14 through 25 in the Amplified Translation because uh, it brings out the amplification of the original language in the Amplified Classic. And I've, I've, there's been times in my struggles in my walk with God that, that You know, when you feel like you're on your last leg and the adversary comes along and tells you you're a loser and you're not going to make it and and, uh, and you, you start second-guessing yourself. And, and Romans chapter 7 is a platform that you can read through there and you really find and understand the struggle. And there's wording that is used in the King James translation that would lead somebody to say, oh, I'm, I really don't feel there's sin in my life. I've repented. I, I think I'm pretty good. But in, in much of the discourse that we're about to read, the term sin does not mean a specific sin or, or a long doing. If you look up the word, it, it, it literally means the, the nature of the flesh. Mm -hmm. Because the nature of the flesh is that enmity with God. It's not subject to the law of God. It can't be. So Romans 7.14, again, I'm reading it uh, in the Amplified Classic. Paul says, we know that the law is spiritual, but I am a creature of the flesh, carnal, unspiritual, having been sold into slavery under the control of sin. And it would be easy to say, oh, well, that's, that's what I was. That's where I, where, uh, where I used to be. But the key in that particular verse is I'm a creature of the flesh. And no matter how much Holy Ghost you have, you're a creature of the flesh. And if the flesh is at enmity with God and it's not subject to the law of God, you know, somebody mentioned before service that voice in the head that, that, oh, stay home, don't come to church. That's what flesh attaches itself to. Yes, the devil may try that, but my flesh will try that too. My flesh is not subject to the law of God, doesn't want to be subject to the law of God. So right out of the gate, as human beings, as flesh, we understand who we are and we should never, ever forget um, as the scripture talks about, you know, the King James says, beware when you think you stand. And the, the Greek word um, is when you have the opinion that you're standing. Doesn't mean that we're supposed to, you know, be fearful of that. Doesn't mean we can't have confidence in ourselves, confidence in the word. You know, Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And in verse 15, he says, for I do not understand my own actions. You ever do something and then after the fact, you kind of want, why in the world did I do that? What led me to do that? Where, where did that come from? And it might've been a split second, a, a moment, moment of time. And the Amplified, he says, I am baffled, bewildered. I do not practice or accomplish what I wish, but I do the very thing that I loathe, which my moral instinct condemns. So I, I'm convinced that people that quit praying, people that, that quit it, coming to service, and, I, and I'm, I'm not saying coming to church, I'm, I'm talking about being with the body. There's something about being with your brothers and sisters in the faith. Even just being in this room tonight with people that I know believe what I believe and believe scriptural truth and are submitted to it gives me strength. 
and anyone that you run into out there that you know is of the faith there's something different when the two spirits connect yep. and that's that's the beauty of this but there's times when you're alone and that's when the adversary comes in and, and if you're going through a challenging times, it's, it's, a, it's a setup and the adversary will just like Eve, you know, did, did God really say that? And you begin to second guess it. And if you don't know the word, uh, then you really don't have a sword because the Bible says the word of God is the sword that's how we combat the lies of the adversary. And so it's good, it's important that, you know, as new people come to the church, as the Lord adds to the church, that we do our best, every single one of us do our best to make a connection with that individual, to walk with them as they, as they learn how to walk. You know, I remember taking my son and, and he, you know, he'd step on my feet and, and I would walk holding his, holding his hands and, and he couldn't walk. So he had to walk with my legs. So it's the same principle in the spirit. Cause you know, if you've been in this long enough, what the adversary is going to do to try and snuff out the babies in Christ. That's right, man. Yep. Add to that, they're just as much flesh. And if they've never been baptized and have the blood applied and they've never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, they don't have a defense. Other than reading the word, having a hunger, as Peter said, a desire for the sincere milk of the word and allowing the Lord to take the word and part truth into them and lead them uh, to come to a place where they recognize, hey, I, I need to have my sins washed away in baptism. I need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But the key in verse 16 in the Amplified that I find interesting is when Paul says, now if I do, and in brackets it's got habitually. John addresses it, I believe, in one of his epistles where, where he talks about, you know, if you sin, that, that's it, it's over, in my words. But it's talking about habitual sin. In the weakness of the flesh, you'll do things, I'll do things like, oh, mercy, where in the world, what happened? And uh, the devil will heap right on you and if you allow him to get into your mind, he'll, he'll bring condemnation. Uh, he'll, he'll wear you out if you don't know how to uh, wrestle with it and use the word of God to get yourself out of it. And if you have the Holy Ghost, Pray in the spirit so that the spirit can war with you or for you. Amen. So he says, now if I do habitually what is contrary to my desire, that means that I acknowledge and agree that the law, the law being I am flesh. One of the, one of the texts that James uses in, in uh, James 1 and 8, where it says that a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. The word uh, minded literally in the Greek means two spirited. I'm flesh and I'm spirit. I've got the Holy Ghost. There's a Holy Ghost side of me. There's a spiritual side of me and there's a carnal or fleshly side of me. So I'm two spirited. However, what James is saying, if it's a constant vacillating between my flesh and my spirit, where there's really instability, you know, one moment I'm praising the Lord and happy, thank you, Jesus. And the next moment I'm uh, going into a place where I shouldn't be going or, or hanging around with people or talking in a fashion that I shouldn't be talking or uh, living a lifestyle that I shouldn't be living. If there's that vacillating back and forth between flesh and spirit, then that causes a double-mindedness. And the, the next verse, I believe, in James 1 uh, ends up saying that uh, don't expect to receive anything from God. So you understand as time goes on, your triggers, your triggers of, of weakness that may cause you to make a decision, cause you you know, people that are an alcoholic that get delivered from that and, and go through the, their 
uh, program, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They they have a sponsor. They can get on the phone. Hey, I'm having these desires. I, I man, I need to talk to you. I need to get together with with you. And and uh, it takes sometimes. It takes a while. It's the, and you'll hear people that have been clean for five, ten years, and they fall off the wagon. And it's like, oh no. So reverse that from a spiritual perspective. Uh, you may fall and, and fail in the beginning, but after a while, once you get your walking legs in the spirit uh, and you're, you just maintain that hunger before God, you know, love to be in the house of God, you understand faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. But even those of us that have been in this a long time, we're still flesh. Yes, that's right. The word can become just the word. Church can just become church you know when we say to one another man it's good to be here I don't know about you but I mean it man, man. <laughs> it's like an oasis out there you know? no, or rather the house yeah, is the oasis, oasis. You know, it's, yeah. it's a desert out there it's a wilderness out there sometimes I'm home and I just want it to be Thursday yeah right I want to, be I want to have church now, if I do habitually what is contrary to my desire, that means that I acknowledge and agree that the law, that I'm, I'm two-spirited, it's good, morally excellent, and that, it, and that I take sides with it. I come to the conclusion that I'm flesh, and I come to the conclusion that I have spirit. Verse 7, however, it is no longer I who do the deed, but the sin, the principle, my flesh, my carnal nature, which is at home in me, has possession of me and that's you know the bible says god has chosen to put this treasure in an earthen vessel why that the excellency of the power may be of him and not of us he has left us in this tabernacle of flesh you know through the years i've heard of people saying oh, wouldn't that be nice if you you got the holy ghost and poof off you off you went to heaven it doesn't happen Paul talks about fighting the good fight of faith. And, and in, by the time you get to verse 18, the apostle Paul says, for I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I know my flesh. I know my weaknesses. I know what I should do, what I can't do. I know what I, I, I got to run from. Remember when Joseph was tempted and he Man, he took off. My understanding is she ripped his clothes off. He ran out of that house naked. You know, so it's it's those constant awareness that I am flesh. And you, you, you never get to a, a strength or a point where you can drop your guard and say, no, I, 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 I'm in this now. I, I'm, I'm all set. I mean, you ask some of, some of the individuals that, that were once powerfully used of God that have uh, fallen from grace. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right. Notice, I can will what is right, but I cannot perform it. I have the intention and urge to do what's right, but no power to carry it out. Verse 19, for I fail to practice the good deeds I desire to do, but the evil deeds that I do not desire to do are what I am ever doing. Now, as we read through this, some of you might be saying, I'm not that bad. You know, I'm not, I, I'm not, I haven't really hit that low phase or that low state. However, the point is I'm flesh. That's right. And if you say that you've never succumbed to your flesh, the Bible says you're a liar. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. If a man say he has no sin, he's a liar. That's right. yep. And so we recognize the flesh side of us. And verse 20, Paul says, Now if I do what I do not desire to do, it is no longer I doing it. It is not myself that acts, but the sin, the principle, which dwells within me. It's fixed. It's operating in my soul. That's why the, the scriptures are clear on what we're supposed to do with the scriptures. We build our life based on the scripture. And people that don't build their life based on the scripture are the ones that are on the edge, 
are the ones that uh, never come to the understanding or the realization of biblical truth. Uh, they may say, praise the Lord. They may sing uh, and, and what we would consider worshiping God. But if they're not born again of water and spirit, their worship is in vain. You say, well, how can you know? Well, Jesus said when the spirit of truth comes, he'll lead you and guide you into all truth. And God is not willing that any should perish. So if there's things in your life or things in my life that don't belong there, God is going to, in his mercy, he's going to work in our lives to bring us to that place where there's total surrender and total submission to his will. Verse 21, Paul says, So I find it to be a law, a rule of action from my being. This flesh, it's always there. I, I, I believe it. I understand it. I accept it. That when I want to do what is right and good, evil is present with me, and I am subject to its insistent demands. I am subject to its insistent demands. Just let your mind stray for a little bit. Latch on, latch on to a word of gossip. Latch on mm -hmm. to a, a, a negative yes. spirit. Uh, uh, be a listening ear to somebody of somebody that just complains all the time. You'll get to a point where you won't even want to be around them. Mm -hmm. It just, it just, it seeps in. And sometimes you, you want to say, where did my Holy Ghost go? And it's always after the fact. Yes, sir. It's like the light comes on after the fact. And you want to say, why in the world did I do that? Exactly. But I discern, verse 23, in my bodily members, in the sensitive appetites and wills of the flesh, a different law, a different rule or action at war against the law of my my mind, my, my reasoning, and making me a prisoner to the law of sin, my flesh, that dwells in my bodily organs, in the sensitive appetites and will of the flesh. And the flesh always has an appetite. Even after you eat, give it three hours and you'll want to eat some more. And even after you eat some more, you always have room for something else. This, the, the flesh has some very, very strong appetites. And until we kill those appetites, how did, how did Paul phrase it in the King James? He said, I, I do mortify the deeds. That word mortify literally means to kill. He didn't physically kill himself, but he understood there's certain things I've got to put to rest. That's why it's, as I mentioned to you, when I came to the faith, I had... I was brought up in the 70s. It was in the hippie movement. I had rock and roll music and everything. And I just started cleaning my house. I got rid of all my rock and roll albums. Anything that would incite my flesh, the passions of the flesh. You know, an alcoholic's not going to go in a bar room or attend a party where, where liquor is being served. Because right. he knows what it'll do to him. When you decide to walk with Jesus, the Bible says, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. Well, I don't know what the unclean thing is because I just came into this. That's why you're, you're in the house of God. That's why you're involved in Bible study. That's why faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Verse 24, he says, Oh, un unhappy and pitiable and wretched man that I am, who will release and deliver me from the shackles of this body of death. Here, here's the beauty of this. We could focus on the, the, the detriments of our flesh and the weakness of our flesh and, and say like Paul said in, in King James, Oh, wretched man that I am. You know, we're, what am I going to do? I, I, can't, I can't get out of this. But then in verse 25, he says what? Oh, thank God he will. Through Jesus Christ, the anointed one, our Lord. So then indeed of myself with my mind and heart serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. 
And that, brothers and sisters, is what the, uh, you know, what the scripture, because Romans 8 is a continuation of that same thought, Romans 8 and 1. Is, that's why the word therefore is a conjunction where it connects what was just said in Romans 7, the same thought, because of this fact, therefore there is now no condemnation, no judging guilty of wrong for those who are in Christ Jesus. Why? How come? I know people that are in Christ Jesus and sometimes uh, when I see them doing things that I know the scripture teaches against, are engaging in things that the te that the scripture is teaching again. E either their well, their flesh is in control. They don't know the word of God. They're not submissive to the word of God. They're not submissive to the lordship of Jesus Christ. The Bible says we've been bought with a price. That's right. If you really want to understand that, do a study on uh, the the old days of uh, of slavery. You know when when Potiphar purchased Joseph. Joseph didn't have a thing to say about it. Didn't have a word, word to say about it. He was put on the auction block. Potiphar bought him. And he now belonged to Potiphar. And if we're bought with a price and we're bought with the precious blood of Jesus, then we are not our own. And we don't accept that. Let's be honest. We don't accept the fact that we are not our own. In theory, we may say it, and in theory, we may believe it, but our life reflects a total different thing because we do what we want, when we want, how we want, and many, many times we don't even acknowledge God in the process. Amen. Therefore, there is now no condemnation to no adjudging guilty of wrong. For those who are in Christ Jesus, who live and walk not after the dictates of the flesh, but after the dictates of the spirit. Why? How can that be? You just finished telling me I've got this monster inside of me that has a strong appetite that wants to always be satisfied. Verse 2, he says, for the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus you can always find a verse of scripture that will combat the desire of the flesh. There are scriptures, there is word to instruct, to, that's why uh, Paul told uh, Timothy, 1 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by what? Inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine or teaching. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Why would God give us this? So that the man of God or woman of God will be complete or mature, able to do what the Lord Jesus wants them to do. Uh, he also says about the fivefold ministry given to the church for the perfecting, for the full equipping of everybody in the assembly, everybody in the body of Christ. So that everybody in the body of Christ now, because they're bought with a price and they're not their own, they're not allowed to take time on their own. They're not allowed to do things on their own. In all your ways, you acknowledge him and he directs your path. Yeah. We're all supposed to be building the church. Actually, the body is supposed to be adding to the church while the ministry is used to strengthen and equip the saints to be able to do that. Amen. And so... For the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, the law of our new being has freed me from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law could not do. Its power being weakened by the flesh, the entire nature of man without the Holy Spirit, the entire nature of man without the Holy Spirit is weakened by the flesh. Praise God. I am thankful that I have been taught these things. Amen. Hello. Amen. Sending his own son in the guise of sinful flesh and as an offering for sin, God condemned sin in the flesh. He subdued it. He overcame it. He deprived it of its power over all who accepts that sacrifice. All who identifies and accepts the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and allows the gospel to convict them of their sin. They don't even question. 
I, I remember my mother said to me, you want to be baptized in Jesus' name tomorrow after service? My only answer was, as a brand new, as green as green can be in the faith, my comment was, if that's what it says I have to do in the Bible, then I want to do it. It wasn't, well, let me think about it, or well... Once I understood and saw it in the scripture that if I want to go to heaven, this is what I need to do. Verse 4, so that the righteous and just requirement of the law might be fully met in us who live and move, not in the ways of the flesh, but in the ways of the spirit. Our lives governed not by the standards and according to the dictates of the flesh, but controlled by the Holy Spirit. And Brother Dominic, that is a lifetime task. You never become so spiritual where this flesh isn't affected. Never, Dominic. I mean, Frankie, never. Your flesh will always fight you. Your flesh always fights the spirit man and the desire. Doesn't mean we we're, we can be defeated. I, I believe I can do all things through Christ. He's given us armor. He's given us word. Uh, we are more than conquerors. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? I mean, on and on and on. Yes, the Bible teaches us who we are and what we are, but it also shows us what we can be. If any man be in Christ, he's what? It's a new creation. Old things are passed away. All things become new. Verse 5, for those who are according to the flesh and are controlled by its unholy desires, notice, set their minds on and pursue those things which gratify the flesh. It's easier not to pray. It's easier not to come to church. It's easier not to discipline your flesh and tell it no. It's easier to do that. And if that is my driving force, if my flesh is my driving force, if that law that's within me is in the control and in the seat of driving, then guess what? I won't be around that long when it comes to the faith. Praise God. Those who are according to the Spirit and are controlled by the desires of the Spirit, here it is, set their minds on and seek those things which gratify the Holy Spirit. Praise God. By God's grace, it's not us. By grace we're saved through faith. It's not of ourselves, it's a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. By God's grace, he empowers us to like and love the word of God. He empowers us to submit ourselves to the word of God, to the spirit of God, to a life of discipline in the spirit. He gives us the grace, the desire to do it. Think about that. That's right. Now the mind of the flesh, which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit, is death. Death that compromises all the miseries arising from sin, both here and hereafter. But the mind of the Holy Spirit is life and soul and peace, both now and forever. That is, verse 7, because the mind of the flesh with its carnal thoughts and purposes is hostile to God for it does not submit itself to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. So then those who are living, verse 8, the life of the flesh catering to the appetites and impulses of the carnal nature cannot please or satisfy God or be acceptable to him. I mean, I'm glad that the story do, doesn't end there. Thank the Lord. Amen. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Oh, I believe verse 16. You know, Galatians chapter 5 tells us the the works of the flesh, the, the works of, of the spirit. And if you go, before we go to 16, look at verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, 
idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such the like, which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's what we're seeing in the world. Yes. The, it's the flesh has been brought to a level influenced by spiritual darkness. Yes. That's why there's murders. That's why there's the, the fornication, the uncleanness, the lasciviousness, the the all all these things. Do a study on those words alone. The strife, the heresy. It's all because flesh is ruling the roost, yes. and it is so powerful and so strong. They're blinded. And they cannot turn from that darkness unless the church prays that darkness off of them and stands in the gap and makes up the hedge and weeps before the Lord to have mercy and have, please, Lord, save them. Give them another chance to make a decision. Give these people the opportunity to choose who they will serve. But in order for us to dominate spirit over flesh, Paul gives us the key in verse 16. He says, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. He says, oh, well, that's, that's pretty, uh, that, that's pretty, sounds pretty easy. But do we know how to walk in the spirit? Mm -hmm. and then he says in verse 17, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. He's a contrary, the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the Spirit, you're not under that principle of war between flesh and spirit or, or the physical carnal uh, ruling and reigning. We can come to a place where we're walking in the Spirit, where, where our, our life is focused on our spirituality, more than our focus on the, call it the comforts of life or the, the physical elements of life. Mm -hmm. There's a mindset where yes. you're constantly plugging into Jesus, if I can use that phrase, where you, your prayer life is strong, your submission to the Spirit, your submission to the Word, you're, you're on your guard all the time, your, your feelers are up and you can be in a crowd and, and, and your feelers are up. You can, and uh, you, you might uh, either through ignorance or your flesh just gets the dominant. dominant. You, you ever, uh, anybody ever be convicted by the Holy Ghost of something you shouldn't be doing, but you're doing it and all of a sudden the light comes on and because you're, you're really doing your best to walk in the Spirit, the Holy Ghost uh, speaks to you and you feel the conviction of the Spirit and and you might have to repent of it and just ask God, man, I didn't realize that. Sorry, Lord Jesus, in your name, by your grace, by your power. It's constant. It's constant. That's why when Jesus taught us to pray, part of that prayer is forgive us for our trespasses. You know, forgive me for my iniquity. Forgive me for the presumptuous sins that I do. Forgive me for the secret things that I don't even know I'm doing. So you're, you're constantly seeking to be led of the Spirit. And if that's the case, then you can, you can be more free from the principle of two-spirit man on flesh. Doesn't mean it goes away, your flesh and your spirit. But the Spirit, that's why Paul said, I'm more than a conqueror. And he lists those things who can separate us from the love of Christ. And his clear, clear response is, no, I do not have to do that. And one of the ways that Paul said that is done uh, can be found in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. When, when you understand that this is not just going to happen. There are people full of the Holy Ghost, faithful to church, and doing what they're supposed to do, that are carnal as can be. 
because they've separated, we'll call it church life, or maybe let's phrase it spirit life and flesh life. And with their, when they're engaged in flesh life, sometimes you might even wonder, gee, are these, these people, are these, are these real believers? And those that, if I can say it this way, go the extra mile and discipline themselves. Well, I, no, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go there. I'm, I don't, I don't think I should go there. We're not going to please everybody. Nope. And people that do not have the Holy Ghost and do not have the kind of life that we're pursuing, our life to them is foolish. Mm -hmm. Because we would rather come to church and stay home and watch the baseball game mm -hmm. or go to a, a gathering or, or whatever. That, and again, it's not so much the church. I just want to be with my brothers and sisters. Yes, man. Yeah. I want to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Maybe God has something to say to me at the house of the Lord and something I really need. Amen. You ever been in the church? You ever come to church and you just have a question in you and you come to the house of God and God, through the ministry of the words, Amen. answers you? Amen. It's like, Amen. <laughs> How did that dude know I was asking that? <laughs> so it's done yes. and I, I think in, there are so many landmines that the adversary is setting the traps that the adversary is setting we've really got to understand what the Holy Ghost is speaking to us tonight because if you and I want to go to heaven we need to subdue this flesh and in Galatians 2.20, Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. How? How am I crucified with Christ? Many believers don't understand that, that verse. Don't even know how to answer that question. How am I crucified with Christ? But Paul fully understood it. When you read his portfolio his experiences uh, how many times he was beaten with a cat of nine tails how many times he was hungry he was in the deep You'd, you know we all say oh man uh, I wouldn't want to go through that he had to go through that but he said I'm crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the, notice, here's the key to understanding I am crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I have found myself pr praying of late, saying, asking the Lord to give me his motives, the motives that the man Christ Jesus had when he was on the earth. I want him. What motivated him? I want his motives. Why did he do what he did? I want, I want that to be a part of me. Because the only way that you and I are going to be crucified with Christ, and when you think of Christ and his motives, people came against him, it, he didn't flinch. They talked about him, he didn't flinch. They slandered him, he didn't flinch. They I mean, they, they, it was the atmosphere of Jesus. Yes, many of the people flocked to him. People did listen to his teachings. But the religious element of his day hated him with such a degree that if you and I found ourselves in that error, I wonder how many of us would have been able to put up with it in comparison to how we act now to adversity or how we act now to, to trial and tribulation. You see, you'll know when you're crucified with Christ 
when you accept what God allows in your life to crucify you. When you accept uh, trouble, when you accept uh, rejection, when you accept whatever it is that makes us un uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I mean, modern day Christianity, everybody wants to pray everything off of us. Mm -hmm. None of us want anything, man. We when 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 we hear something, oh Lord, get them out of that situation, and God do this, and God do that. Everybody wants to pray everything off of people, including us. But to be crucified with Christ, Jesus said, "I've just come to do the will of my Father." And when His flesh was was maybe re resisting that a bit in the Garden of Gethsemane, He said, "Not my will. I wish this cup would pass from me." but not my will, but yours be done. So when you and I can go through life with adversity, it could be sickness, it could be your job, it could be anything, and we don't resist it with an attitude, and we don't resent him for allowing it to happen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He loved me and gave himself for me. In Philippians chapter 3 and uh, verse 10. Philippians 3 and 10, Paul said that I may know him. I, I, don't, I don't know about you, but I, I want to know him. I, I'm, I'm, I can honestly sit here and say that I'm not in it for the blessings. I don't want to go to hell. I pray to him all the time, save me, Jesus. Um, I don't want to be lost. Whatever you have to do, whatever it takes, save me. But I'm not in this for the benefits of being part of the kingdom, Brother Mike. You understand what I'm saying? I, I've grown Sister Sue to the place where I, I do what I do because I love him. And I want to be pleasing to him. Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Yes, I want to walk in the, in, in the resurrection power. I don't want to minister with intellectual per, persuasive words of my wisdom. I want, to, I want to minister in the demonstration of the spirit and, and power. And that's what Paul said he wanted to do. But he also mentions the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. In other words, whatever he went through, I mean, I don't find any place in the Bible of the books that he read where he said, oh man, I'm in another prison in Philippi, or oh, I'm in a prison in Galatia, or oh, I'm, boy, these Corinthian church, man, you, uh, you, I wish you'd quit picking on me, picking on me, and then and, and he just, he accepted what God allowed in his life that crucified him and made him dead to himself and alive unto God. And when we understand that and things happen to, yes, we might hurt and yes, we, we might even cry and we, we might even get worried about it or fearful about it. But there's something inside of us that, that, that turns on, that clicks in where we say, not my will, Jesus, but yours be done. I pray, Father, this is very uncomfortable to me, and, and I really don't like it, but whatever you have to do, Jesus, you, I pray that this would accomplish your will as you have purposed it in heaven. My desire is to do the will of my heavenly Father. And if this has what has to happen to me in order for me to be crucified to myself and decreased enough to myself, Jesus, so that you can use me in these last days, then so be it. And I don't resent you for it. There are people that resent God for God allowing things to take place in their life. Even taking a loved one from them. They resent God. God didn't heal. God didn't answer my prayer. I lost my job. I lost my home. God didn't answer my prayer. And I, I stood on the word of God. I, I trusted him. And look what he did. They're not dead. They're not crucified. You'd say, why, why, would, why would God want us to have to go down that road? Hmm? 
why do you want to go to heaven? Only crucified believers are going to heaven. Because in this world, we're going to have tribulation. Yes. But even in that tribulation, we can be of good cheer. You know Amen. why? You know why we can be in good cheer? Because in the morning, I'm going to be sitting at the feet of Jesus, Amen. enjoying his presence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Do you feel that? Something just waved right through here. In Jesus' name. That's why. Because I love him. The thief hung alongside of him and said, Oh, Jesus, just, man, remember me in your, in your kingdom. Jesus looked at him and he said, What a statement to make. He didn't ask for it to come off the cross. He didn't ask anything. All he wanted to do is be with me. He turned around and looked at that man and said, this day you will be with me in paradise. Yep. If it takes persecution in your life and crucifixion to bring you to a place of total submission to the spirit of God in your life in order to ensure that you're going to make it to heaven, would you still say no if you knew that? Would you walk away from it? Let's pray. Father in heaven, in the name of the Lord Jesus. You're so good to us, Father. You're so good to us, Jesus. Much we don't understand, Father, but you've given us your word as the road map to our life. We understand, my God. You take us precept upon precept and line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Who's in control of my life, Jesus? Is it my flesh or is it your spirit? Do I still kick and scream when something goes wrong? Do I get all upset and down? Do people know I'm just down in the mouth and just down because this is going on in my life? Or is the joy of the Lord my strength? Lord Jesus, I pray, give us understanding of this. Give us understanding. Give us impartation of the Holy Ghost, my God, so we can truly be believers, where we truly love our enemies, where we tr pray for those that despitefully use us, my God, where we're not afraid to acknowledge you in our lives, in our daily living, Father. Show us those areas, Lord Jesus, that are a stumbling block in our lives. Show us the rock we need to fall upon so we can be broken, Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe you're going to pour your spirit out, Father, upon all flesh. And you're looking for your people. You're looking for believers, Lord, that are going to be so submitted to you and so dead to themselves and so dead to their desires that at any moment you can move on them to accomplish your will and purpose. Flow through them, Lord Jesus, to lead someone out of darkness and into your marvelous light. Don't give up on us, Father. Don't give up on us, Lord Jesus. We haven't arrived yet. I'm not satisfied, Father, where I am, Lord Jesus. And whatever it takes, O God of heaven, for me in this body, Lord Jesus, for us to be the true church of the living God in this city, I pray in Jesus' name, Lord of heaven, those that are watching, those that are listening, that hunger and thirst to know you and to find you, Lord Jesus. I pray that the sufficiency of your grace, my God, the tenderness of your touch and your leading, my God, you're not going to leave us. You're not going to forsake us. You're not going to leave us on our own. You know everything that goes on in our life. You hear everything. You see everything. You allow everything. Everything that takes place are not by chance. You allow it 
You put your limitations on it and you use it, Father, according to your will and your good pleasure.